the ACC, that is where we're going to start this year. Um, one of the few, probably the first time in maybe seven years that the ACC does not have one team that is a huge odds on favorite to win. Um, and that would be Clemson. This is one of the first years, I think legitimately about seven years that Clemson hasn't been a massive favorite to win this conference. Um, they are still one of the top championship contenders. Um, but there's some other teams that are kind of catching or hoping to catch up to them this year. Um, so the ACC, when you look at playoff contenders, that's where we're going to start. I think there's two in the ACC. I think it's Clemson and Florida state. Um, Clemson went there six years in a row. Um, they've had, I guess, by their accounts, down years the past couple of years, um, really just last year. Um, even though I think they were what, 10 and two last year, um, lost a couple games. Um, uninspiring, though. It was very uninspiring. It was, last, it was. The last two years of Clemson have been very uninspiring. It's just been really, really good defense, uh, total incompetence at offensive line and quarterback play. Uh, I think that, part of the like uninspiring like feel to it, though, is how high the expectations got. Yeah, and got course, to the point where sure. it's national championship or nothing. Which yeah. there is, as a, like a fan of a program, you dream of that that being where you're at. So, um, I I also think a problem with Clemson that's developed the past couple of years is the coach kind of jumped the shark. Like he had this reputation of being, it was almost like an elite program that still had the chip on its shoulder, and then they became, you know, the actual preeminent power in college football for a you know two, three, four year stretch. He's just the coach kind of has trouble. He's the coach kind of has trouble. Um, he's very stubborn. and has kind of become a celebrity coach. In my opinion, it's been a little weird watching Davos winning the last couple of years. So maybe he'll get back to his roots now that they're not just a giant favorite to win that ACC and go to the college football. Well, when you look at coaching, I think Clemson has fallen victim to what most successful programs do is when you start being successful, all of your assistants and coordinators get picked off. So they, right. they're constantly bringing in new assistants, new coordinators, because they're leaving for which, you know, I, I'm sure Dabo would tell you, like, that's what he wants for his coaches. He wants to see them be successful. But it has created kind of a little inconsistency. Um, you saw Will Venables go over to Oklahoma a couple of years ago. Um, you have a new, uh, I believe, two new coordinators this year. Um, yeah, they actually kept Venables for an incredibly long time. Yes, it they was did. actually yeah. amazing how long he stayed. There. Yeah, they, they brought in TCU's offensive coordinator, right? I Garrett, believe that's Thompson, yes. yeah. Garrett yes. Riley, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's Garrett Riley. And then defensive coordinator, you have Wes Goodwin and Mickey Kuhn um, in there this year. Um, the other kind of He's huge team Lincoln, this Lincoln Riley's brother, by the way. It is. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. Garrett cool. Riley. Yep. yep. Lincoln Riley's brother. Um, the other kind of uh, playoff contender in the ACC this year is uh, Florida State. Florida State coming in with all the hype in the world. Um, which scares me a little bit, but you have Jordan Travis um, at uh, back at quarterback. Um, he had 24 touchdowns, five interceptions, 3,200 yards last year. He is uh, well, uh, on the short list um, for a lot of people for a Heisman Trophy contender this year. Um, a lot of transfers. You have Keon Coleman coming over from Michigan State. Um, their wide receiver room is stacked. Your running back room is stacked. You have maybe the best defensive player in the country and Jared Verse um, coming off the edge there. Um, so expectations in Tallahassee are massive. Um, the good thing uh, for fans is you're going to find out real quick as they are going to open the season, a neutral site game against LSU in Orlando. Um, so yeah. that will be huge. There, that's one thing I, I want to give Clemson credit for. They they always play a top-tier team to start the season. A lot of teams are afraid to do that. Well, that's Florida State. Florida right. State's playing LSU. Oh, well, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Clemson starts the season with Duke. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. He always. No, but they actually, Clemson, the last bunch of years, they played Georgia, does, Georgia, Georgia or Auburn. Most yeah. of Wait, what, what, is with, what is with teams starting the year with a conference opponent and calling it a non-conference? Is that going to be considered a conference game? No, Can I tell a, you, Clemson has decided game. to not do that this year. His first three <laughs> games are Duke, Charleston, and Florida Atlantic. So that Duke game doesn't count as a conference game. No, it does. It does. No, it does. It does. Really? Okay. They open the season with a conference. It's not, game. it's not like college basketball where you get to do that. 
Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. All right. Fair enough. Yep, that counts. It's a, it's a Monday night game at Duke. So that'll be, I mean, Duke, a team that like a little bit of a dark horse this year. So that'll be an interesting uh, first game. Uh, Duke not really known for their atmosphere as far as football goes. <laughs> Doesn't have a huge stadium. Um, but that'll be, you know, Cade Klubnik, that'll be his first shot um, to kind of get in there. Um, the one thing he does have is he has a very experienced back with him and Will Shipley, um, somebody that is, you know, a Doak Walker Award nominee for sure this year. Um, mm-hmm. has had a couple of good seasons. So that'll be helpful as he kind of navigates his first season as really the starter. Um, and we don't have – it'll be interesting too for Clemson because last year I think – all of the Ugalele Klubnik talk, I think that could have been distracting. But now you have a clear guy this year um, going forward. So I think that'll end up being better for Clemson. Yeah, if Clemson's the same team essentially as it was last year, just with Klubnik as quarterback, I mean, you could see them go undefeated. Well, I mean, I mean, they lost, they lost three first round pick level. Yes, but they players. seem to have that revolving but door of those kind of guys. The defense is absolutely coming. loaded again. Yeah, right. The defense and, is stacked. And the offense is like literally the same team, which obviously the offense was bad, but I think it was a lot of bad because the offensive line was inexperienced and young and because DJ just didn't live up to the hype. I think Cade Klubnik can be pretty darn good. And uh, they have they have some really good players in the skill positions. Yeah, they do. And uh, you were talking about the offensive line. The offensive line returns four or five uh, starters from last year. So Are that's the odds on team. favorite to win this conference. Yeah, barely. It's them and Florida State are basically a pick. Yeah, right. basically a pick them right now. Um, in the top 25 poll, Florida State came out ranked six, I believe, and Clemson was around 11, depending on where you looked. So um, nationally, Florida State is being looked at, but I think that's just because everybody's excited that they're actually uh, – dra- yeah. DraftKings to win the conference, Clemson's plus 145, Florida State's plus 150. Wow. Okay, okay. So basically uh, I- dead even. I've got a quick Florida State take here. Obviously, great season last year, breakthrough, 10 wins. They looked really good at times. A couple stinkers in there, but they 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 looked like they were a really up-and-coming program. Um, obviously, the quarterback uh, was a really nice, bright spot for them, and he's coming back. But I feel like the media is obsessed with doing a hype on either Florida State or Miami every year for the past decade. Like, they're back. This team is back. Clemson better look out. So I don't know if I really completely buy it that Clemson needs to feel threatened in this conference. Um, They, you know, it's hard. It's hard to knock off the King when the King is this consistently good over and over and over and over again. So it'll, it'll be fun if Florida state can be right there. And I'm sure when those teams do play later in the season, it'll be a massive game, but I don't know if I'm ready to give this conference to anybody except for the Tigers because they've just been such a class uh, college football program for a long time now, despite my comments on the coach. Interesting thing is they they play week four. Clem, Clemson, Florida State wow. is at Clemson on September twenty third. So wow, okay, it'll it'll be very early um, in the season. Did you have something? Yeah, I, I, Brendan. I, well, I'm just I'm I know I'm partial and biased, but I, I think Clemson's going to be insane this year. I think their defense is ridiculous. They have the best mm-hmm. linebackers in the country. Um, I think they have. I think three linebackers project to be first round picks. Um, obviously Jeremiah Trotter Jr., which is Jeremiah Trotter's son, is like the top linebacker in the country, uh, along with uh Barrett Carter. Um, I mean, Clemson's defense is gonna be nasty. And if if Klubnik is able to step up, and I th- I think we saw flashes that he made the offense look alive last year at least. Yeah. Um then I think you might see Clemson back to the the total dominance of the ACC. And you add to the fact their schedule this year is so easy. It um, is. So was, outside of the Florida State game and Notre Dame, I mean, it's insanely easy. I, the other hard game is North Carolina. but Yeah, Florida yeah. State and Notre Dame, they get at home as well, too. Um, and North Carolina, they get at home. So yeah. all of their kind of – Big test this year will be at home. Um, they do have to play at South Carolina the last game of the season. That's always a tricky one. Um, South Carolina, I think, will be improved this year too. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, I like the way things kind of shake up schedule-wise for Clemson. If, if we're talking about a, a possible sleeper in this conference, I think it's the obvious, you know, hyped sleeper that I'm just going to go with. But, you know, UNC has been real solid, and they've had bursts, and they've shown a lot of good things under Mac Brown. Drake May is obviously awesome. He's coming back. So 
Um, that's, you know, if their defense could get short up at all, which is just very inconsistent the last couple of years, yeah, UNC can the, make a splash here. That's the problem with UNC is their defense. Uh, yeah. Drake May might be the number one pick. He might be, I mean, probably well, not with Caleb, in a world that has Caleb Williams, but he might, you know, he he's going to be a top pick. Um, he's had a great career there at UNC. But, yeah, like you said, their problem is their defense. You look at the games they lost last year. They lost to Notre Dame. They gave up 45 points. They lost to NC State. They gave up 30. Gave up 21 and a loss to Georgia Tech. Um, lost to Clemson in the ACC championship game. Gave up 39 and then lost to Oregon in their bowl game by 128-27. So, yeah, they're going to go as far as their defense allows them to go. That crazy game they won against that lower conference school earlier in the year, they gave up like 50-something, but won by one. Appalachian State, 63-61. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Crazy game. That was a wild game. It was. um, A couple other uh, dark horses in this conference. Um, One of them I wanted to touch on quickly is Louisville. Now, Louisville, simply for this reason – they avoid everyone good in the conference this year. No Clemson, no Florida State, no North Carolina on their schedule this year. Right. That's um, another problem with conference realignment. Isn't, isn't, not isn't, the, isn't the Cal quarterback Plummer their quarterback? Yeah, Jack Plummer is the quarterback there. Yeah. Um, a ton of new faces at Louisville. Um, basically a whole new offense. Um, their running back comes back. One of their wide receivers, I think, returns. Um, two offensive linemen. Other than that, a lot of transfers, a lot of good transfers, a lot of highly touted uh, high star guys out of high school. Um, but they're somebody that you could see kind of turn that corner um, and be much better than they were last year. If for sim- simply no other reason than their schedule really would allow them to this year. I mean, you look at early, they got Georgia Tech, Murray State, Indiana, BC, um, you know, not a tough game. Like I said, they avoid Florida State, they avoid Clemson, they avoid North Carolina. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I, I don't know if I agree with that so much, but, um, <laughs> they could definitely, I think they could be a little bit better. And then another team is Miami every year. Miami has, um, he could, I mean, yeah, Brennan Armstrong, uh, is there with, uh, I think Robert and uh, is his old OC. Um, so they will be at NC state, but I think Miami this year, Miami, they had all the hype last year. They kind of fell flat. Um, they have a very big early conference game against Texas A&M. Um, Texas A&M comes to Miami. Um, that game is on September 9th, um, second weekend, second real weekend of the season. Um, that'll be big for both of those schools. Um, it'll set one way ahead. It'll set one way back. Um, when you look um, kind of at Miami, though, I think this is a year if they have a lot of returners, um, and this is kind of a put up or shut up year, I think, for Mario Cristobal um, to try to get things turned around there. Um, any other sleepers that any of you have in this conference? That's kind of where mine were at. It's not really a named them. It's yeah. not really a sleeper to win, but um, a team of interest for me is Syracuse and Dino Babers. Um, you know, this team was was uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. They, you know, six and zero. Oh, they gave Clemson a really good half of football, and we thought that was an upset. And I. I I think Clemson did come back and win that game, right? Um, last year. Uh, yeah, that yes. was the game that they um, actually put Cade Klubnik. That's in the game. right. That's right. So, and then Syracuse finished what, like two and four down the stretch? So two and five, something bad. So I think it was even worse than that. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. Like they started out six and zero, oh, and they ended the season one and seven. Yeah. So I think no. it's. I think it's time for Babers. You know, could get fired if they don't have a decent season this year or, you know, stack up a couple more wins than last year. So yeah. the ACC from three to 12, how many teams are, who can keep track at this point, but it's a, it's, it's interesting beyond the top two, but I don't, I don't see a real threat to the top. I think two you players. have four kind of dungeon dwellers. And I think you have the two Virginia teams, Virginia, Virginia BC, Tech, uh, Tech, BC and Georgia Tech. I think they're kind of going to be out of it. Um, BC's old quarterback, Phil Jerkovic. He's at Pitt now with uh, Signetti, the, uh, his old offensive coordinator. Um, so Pitt, Pitt is a team that always plays good defense. They have Narduzzi there. Um, he's always has a physical team. So they could be a team that could win a game they might not be supposed to um, going into this. But, yeah, I think this, this conference definitely runs through Clemson and uh, Florida State. You look at kind of the big non-conference games this year. Um, you have UNC at South Carolina September 2nd. That's in Charlotte. So right off the bat, uh, right off the bat, that's going to be a big game. 
um, LSU, FSU, as we talked about. Um, and you have Florida, St- and then the last weekend of the season, you have Clemson, South Carolina, Florida State, Florida, and Kentucky, Louisville. So those will be three big uh, SEC versus uh, ACC rivalry games that could uh, go to determine a lot playoff wise um, on the last week of the season. So um, closing out the ACC, uh, I want to hear who your player of the year is and who do you think wins that conference ACC again this year. Um, also it's uh, worth mentioning. They will not be doing divisions this year. The, it won't be like coastal versus Atlantic or anything like that. It'll just be the two top teams that play in the ACC title game. Yeah. Um, before I tell you the the team that wins the conference and the player of the year, uh, just a quick question for both of you. Is it good for college football that we have to guess at the be- guess in August if they're do- if a conference is doing divisions and which <laughs> players went from what school three four years in a row to, <laughs> to to does this team play this team in the conference or not? Is this good? All right, I'll pick Clemson and Jordan Shipley. It's only going to get better, Zach. It's yeah, only I'll, get better. I'll pick Clemson and Jordan Shipley. I'll be really easy on this one. Will Shipley or Jordan Travis? Jordan Shipley from from Texas. I meant Will Shipley. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Uh, I'm also taking Clemson. I, I think Cade Klubnik is going to be uh, the player of the year. Um, I, I do like Clemson this year too, but I will go with uh, Florida State and Jordan Travis just to be a contrarian. Um, but yeah, and I think plus that, touchdowns from the Clemson running back. Count that. What? Twenty plus touchdowns from the. Clemson well, yeah. I mean, Shipley was insane the last two years, so I'm sure he's going to do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. he was. Uh, if he can get some help from quarterback and wide receiver this year, I think, I think big things for Clemson. Um, I think they could get back into 